welcome to For Your Health. I'm Mark Crosby of Quincy Access Television. Thank you so much for joining us. And when I say us, it's because I'm joined uh, by a guest, a guest that uh, frequents this program. That is nurse, public health nurse, Caitlin Kirby. We have a lot uh, to discuss today. We do uh, cover a variety of topics. Uh, this one um, is one that uh, I haven't talked about, I haven't presented uh, for quite a few years, and it's probably bound to kind of make everybody a little squeamish. Yes. Would you agree? Yes, I was pretty itchy just even reading the top, Yikes. researching the topic. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about bed bugs and uh, those nasty little creatures that um, are often very hard to see, but certainly uh, you know if you have them. Yeah, so there's certain things you have to look out for, which we'll definitely cover. Um, but I went, all this information is directly from the CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. So it's definitely universal. Um, so I thought it was very important for homeowners and renters to look out for to keep your home and your family safe. You mentioned homeowners, renters, but uh, really anyone that goes on vacation too. Yes, any, anyone at all can be um, at risk for bed bugs exposure. Um, and we'll go kind of into different places you may find them. Um, but again, nobody is exempt from this. Um, you might be at a higher risk if you travel often. Um, but it's definitely just something important to monitor for in your home, just to be safe. The information that you will be sharing today is not only shared with the city of Quincy, but uh, goes out uh, across the state and across the country. Uh, one of those access centers is Swansea Community Network. We certainly thank you for running this series. You're so popular. Well, it's good. It's good information to get out there. And again, I always go right from the CDC or um, sometimes the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. I'll get all my information from there. It is typically pretty universal, um, but I always say check in with your local board of health or your local state health department. Um, yeah, state health department just to see because some things can vary from state to state. Very good. Uh, we will look at an outline just uh, to uh, let you know what to expect. We will start with what are bed bugs? Where are bed bugs found? Who is at risk of getting bed bugs? What health risks do bed bugs pose? Signs and symptoms of infestation, treatment and prevention, and for more information and resources. A lot to cover. So. What are these bed bugs? Yeah, so um, bed bugs are small, flat, par um, parasitic insects that feed solely on blood of people um, and animals while they're sleeping. Um, so again, our skin will be Sounds crawling. like a horror movie. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so they're very small. Typically, they're ranging from one millimeter to seven millimeters. Um, which I was kind of horrified to hear is this, if you look at a penny the size of Lincoln's head, a bed bug can be up to that size. I've never seen one that size. That, yeah. That's huge. So they can grow to be pretty large. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one, so that's probably a good thing. That's a very good thing. That's a very good thing. And they are reddish brown in color and they are wingless. Um, and these bugs can live several months without blood. Um, so we'll see as we're go getting into the next topic, like where they're found. Um, if you travel often, they can attach to a, a suitcase and can live there um, until for a, a couple months until they could transfer to like your bedroom. And so it's tough. They can live. It's a tough parasite to get rid of sometimes. They sound like little vampires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where are bed bugs found? I'm sorry, but yeah. Yes, where are they found? So according to the CDC, um, bed bugs have traditionally been an, seen as a problem in developing countries, um, but recently the issue has been spreading rapidly in parts of the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and other parts of Europe. Um, and we definitely see this because of frequent travel. Obviously, 
millions of people are traveling every day. Um, and like you said, they could get onto your luggage, travel with you onto the plane, and then your destination, get off, right? Yes. And it's very important to know that the presence of bed bugs does not really determine the cleanliness of the environment. Um, so you could even go to a five-star resort or hotel and still be exposed to bed bugs if, um, because you think of it, if somebody had stayed in that hotel prior to you and they had an infestation at home and it attached to their belongings and traveled with them. Um, so it's very hard, like you always just want to be aware of what to look out for. Um, because it's a little, it's scary to know that this can really be anywhere. Like just because you're paying top dollar for a place to stay doesn't mean you're exempt. Um, and these infestations usually occur near or around where people sleep, obviously. Um, so I do have like a photo, um, which is common areas of inspection and treatment for bed bugs. But where we're seeing these are apartments, shelters, rooming houses, hotels, cruise ships, buses, trains, and dorm rooms. So they hide during the day in places that, such as the seam of a mattress, box springs, bed frames, headboards, dressers, inside tables, inside cracks or crevices behind wallpaper or in any clutter or objects around the bed. So it's very important. Um, and they hide during the day. Again, that sounds like vampire activity. Yes. Right. So you definitely want to... Um, they come out at night. Yes. You want to make sure around your bed clutter is not building up. Um, of course, that gets into a whole other aspect of like the state sanitary code, which basically deems a place safe for human inhabitants. Um, so if we go into a home, typically like the local board of health will be called if there's potential hoarding cases. Um, and those individuals can be at a high risk because of all the clutter around the bed. So there's a lot of places for these, these to hide. And on the image, it just kind of show it's a bedroom and it kind of shows you they can be on the upholstery. So your drapes, they can be behind picture frames, behind light fixtures. So it's very important to kind of catch these early and know the signs. Everyone's going to watch this program and then go home and take a flashlight to all of these areas. Yes, yes. And another thing, so these tend to live within eight feet of where people sleep, but they have been shown to be able to travel over a hundred feet in one night. So these bugs can really make around, get around an area. And they crawl. They can't fly. They don't have any wings. Yes. So they just crawl, but... So I guess, and maybe we'll get to this, but one of my thoughts is when you go to a hotel and you have, I guess, a stand that you can put your luggage onto, that's so much better than putting it on the floor. Um, it can be. Yes, it can be. It's tough to say because you never know, like if it's close, to, if you have a stand close to a wall and there were bed bugs around there, there's still a chance. Um, but I would probably rather put my suitcase up on a stand rather than have it again on the ground next to the mattress. When we talk about who's at risk, well, everybody could be at risk. Yes. So anybody that um, is visiting an infected area can then carry this to their next location and their home. Um, people who may be at higher risk is anyone who travels frequently and shares living in or sleep quarters where other people have previously slept. Um, they may be more likely to be bitten or spreading the infestation. Um, in, I know we, we kind of mentioned this, but their bed bugs are really experts at hiding and they usually transport it place to place um, as people travel by hiding in the seams and folds of luggage, overnight bags, folded clothes, bedding, furniture, and anything else they can, like anywhere else they can hide. Um, so a lot of times you, 
this is may scare some people, but like a lot of times, if you see that fur upholstered furniture on the side of the road, it might be better to leave it. Um, I know that's a big thing now, people flipping furniture and all of that. Um, but I definitely say before you bring it into your home, make sure you're really inspecting it to make sure there's no bed bugs hidden in that furniture. Because then if you move it into your home, it will just spread throughout. Because once again, they get into the crevices. Yes, and they can be one millimeter. So they can they start off really small, and then as they grow to like adults, they get bigger, obviously. Um, but you kind of see they like cluster together a little bit sometimes. So as the infestation progresses, they may become more visible. Um, but we'll go into like when we get to the signs and symptoms, I'll give some other like things to look out for. They certainly have travel down. They uh, just simply latch on to folks and kind of go with them. Yes, yes. What are the health risks that they pose? They don't transmit disease and that's obviously a good thing. That's a great thing, yeah. So they're not, again, not known to spread disease, um, but bed bug bites affect uh, each person differently. Um, so they can definitely be an annoyance because their presence may cause itchiness and loss of sleep, especially if you're being bitten through the night and you're scratching, it will keep you up. And then the scratching, if you irritate the skin that much, could end up causing an infection. Yes, yes. Just because of the exposed skin. Yeah, so it could be a secondary skin infection. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, bite responses can range from an absence of any physical sign of the bite to a small bite mark similar to like a mosquito bite um, to a serious allergic reaction. Um, so you want to make sure that you're seeking medical evaluation if you experience an allergic reaction or if that's, that excessive scratching leads to a secondary skin infection. So definitely, if you're noticing uh, you're waking up with bite marks on you and you're scratching overnight, it um, doesn't hurt to check in with a doctor just to help. Even they might give you, uh, I get into it, but they um, may suggest something like a cortisone cream to help with the itching, um, to help prevent scratching the skin to where you might get a secondary infection. This sounds like a horror movie again, <laughs> but let's talk about uh, the signs and symptoms of bed bug infestation. Yeah, so one of the easiest way to identify um, in a bed bug infestation is the telltale bite marks. Typically you would see that on your face, neck, arms, hands, and any other part of your body really. Um, these marks can take as long as 14 days to develop. Um, so it's important to look for other clues as well. So you may see, um, th this, I didn't like this, the bed bugs exoskeletons after molting. So it appears they like grow out of their shell. So you might see like a shell of a bug in your bed. Um, you may see bed bugs in the folds of the mattresses and sheets. So if you're like looking along the seam, um, you may see little specks of brownish little bugs. Um, you may see rusty colored blood spots. Um, and this is due to the blood filled fecal material that they excrete on the mattress or nearby furniture. I'm so glad we did the show. Yes, yes. <laughs> and there's also a sweet musty odor that you might notice. So, Yikes. and hopefully not a lot of our viewers will be experiencing this, but this is just for the people who might be noticing this and not, they don't know what to do. Um, but it's interesting um, because it can be hard to tell if you're bitten because bed bugs, when they bite, they inject um, and they inject an anesthetic and anticoagulant that prevents the person from realizing they've been bitten. Um, the masters. Yeah. So, the, and again, the bite mark is very similar to what like a mosquito or a flea bite might leave um, behind. So it's just slightly swollen and red and it may be very itchy. Mosquitoes 
inject something too, don't they? Yeah, so it kind of almost, um, when they inject it, it kind of almost feels like you weren't stung there. Right. Like it's, it's interesting and it's, these bed bugs can be very sneaky. I guess. So it's good to make sure you're looking out for them. And I know we'll get there, but um, they're not that easy to get rid of. Yes. So that's why um, I'll go into it, but you really want to, our advice from a health department is to reach out to a pest control company. Um, it's always the best way to go about it. There are a lot of products you can buy for at home use, um, but especially just where they can, they reproduce and they like, the amount of them can grow. You really, I would suggest professional help to get rid of them just to ensure the infestation is stopped. We kind of talked about this, or at least you did, uh, the best way to treat a bite should you get bitten by one. Yeah, so. Or two, or yes. three, or more. So for these bites, you want to avoid scratching and apply an anti-itch cream, such as calamine lotion um, or those that contain um, like a Benadryl or cortisol. Um, and you can also take an antihistamine, such as an oral Benadryl, um, and this will just help reduce your body's reaction to, the, to that, so it helps reduce the itching. Um, and remember, if it is an allergic reaction or you do suspect there's a skin infection from your scratching, definitely seek medical evaluation because um, they may have to put you on something stronger. Um, and then what to do if you notice these signs in your house? Um, if you are the property owner, you want to reach out to your local pest control company for evaluation and treatment assistance. Um, and there are several, each, especially where this episode goes out to so many communities. I really just wanted to leave it. You can reach out to your local board of health and they can suggest some companies in your local area. Um, but if you do a Google search, a lot of different companies will pop up. Um, and you would just put your area to see who would service you. Um, and I wanted to put in there, if you rent your property, the first step you would do is contact your landlord to let them know. Um, and if it were to go unaddressed, if the landlord were thought you were maybe making it up or didn't believe it or they just weren't addressing it, you can reach out to your local board of health um, and housing inspectors, in Quincy, our housing inspectors would go out. They would be able to inspect for you and if they see signs and suspect it, they would work with your landlord to make sure that matter is addressed because um, you do have the right to, like it has to be treated. You can't like live in a um, property that has that. Um, and without treatment, they yeah. simply just don't go away. They multiply. Yes, and they'll spread to others and all of that. So um, definitely if you find that you have them and the landlord's not doing something, check in with your local board of health. Um, but again, if you own the property, the first step would be to call the pest control company because if the housing inspectors go out but you're the owner, we would typically cite the owner to fix the issue. Um, and these bed bug infestations are typically treated with an um, insecticide spraying. Um, so I went to look a little bit more into like the spraying, like the chemicals that they use for this. Um, and so the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, has registered more than 300 products uh, for use against bed bugs. So I figured, I'm like, we could go into a whole episode just on those alone. Right. Um, and I'm, of course, not a specialist in the treatment of bed bugs. Um, most of these products can be used by consumers, but there are a few that are restricted to registered um like spe specifically trained professionals, basically. And the EPA evaluates um, data on the safety and effectiveness on these products before approving them. Um, 
So when you reach out to a company, depending on what product they use, they can give you a little bit more advice on um, the safetiness and like how soon you can enter the home after and all of that. Um, there were just obviously way too many products to go into for those. Um, in one thing, when I was speaking with um, one of our housing inspectors in the Quincy Health Department, they had said they can also do like a heat treatment, but typically that's, um, these pest control companies will come out, they'll do the spraying and they might, they'll do typically follow-ups every um, two to three weeks, I believe it is. It may be different depending on the company, what they advise. Um, but they will do follow-up visits and follow-up treatments until the infestation is gone. Um, and then a lot of times if it's not, I was told if it's not responding to the, the sprayed chemicals, they may use like a heat treatment. Um, Those may be the super bed bugs. Yeah, so it's kind of, and it all depends on like, how much stuff you have in there, like um, how many there are, like did you catch it early or have they been there for a long period of time? Well, so I'm going to ask you, I guess, in the history of the health department doing inspections, how frequent does the department find infestation? Um, so typically, I would have to, as a public health nurse, I'm not as, I'm not really involved with the bed bugs um, inspections, so to say. I have been out on one case with an inspector where they suspected um, potential bed bugs, so they advised the landlord to contact a pest control company to address it. Um, I don't think it's very, very common, but we do see at least a couple incidents a year. And I know you had mentioned, you know, if you see a piece of furniture out by the road, you know, think twice about picking that up. But also that brings to mind yard sales, that brings to mind antique shops. Yes, yeah. So it can be hard, typically with like your antique shops and um, secondhand stores, I, I can't say for certain, um, but typically they would probably be evaluating the item, whereas like if you're picking it up just off the curb, that nobody's inspected that or looked at it. Um, so I'm, I shouldn't say for certain, but I'm sure there are policies in place. And maybe if you are at an antique store, you can ask them, like, do you have a policy to check for certain things like that? Um, but it's just, it's just kind of a pre-warning. You just want to be aware that bed bugs are out there and they can, um, they can go unseen for a while. Do you, do you know that, um, do you know if they have any enemies? Does anything tend to eat bed bugs? That I am not aware. I'm not either. I'm just, not too sure of that. It would be that. great if they were, yeah. right? And just one real quick thing before we get to our resources, um, the inspector had also said it's very important, so when you reach out to this company, they can come out and do an assessment. Before they come back to do a treatment, they give you a list of requirements that you have to follow, such as, um, I looked at one specific site, and I didn't want to mention them specifically because I don't know if different pest control companies go a little bit differently, um, but such as like bagging up belongings, taking off the sheets, uh, you want to like clean those items and bag them. Um, so basically when the company comes out to do the spray, they're spraying like the mattress and box spraying, and you don't have all the clutter around it. Um, and so basically you want to comply with the list that is provided to you, because if not, it can just kind of prolong it. And it makes sense, because if you think of it, if you have like a boatload of laundry all around your bed and you leave it there for the spray, I'm sure there's places for those bugs to hide. You've just created more space for them to play. Yeah, so you really want to make sure that you're following all the guidelines recommended in order to quickly and effectively like treat the infestation.
should have done the show on Halloween. I know. <laughs> you know let's look. You mentioned uh, resources, so let's uh, talk a little bit about resources. Yes. So all of this information I, again, got from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention um, under the top. You just to go right for under bed bugs on that website. Um, so I, that website is cdc.gov and on that you can just look up bed bugs to find it, all this information. Um, and then I also wanted to add the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, and this was on pesticides to control bed bugs. And that's where it gets into, um, it did say there's over 300 products that can, that are approved. Um, but it, it did go into quite a few of different categories of those products as well. Um, so even if you do reach out to a company and they tell you, I use this product, I'm sure they'll have information on that product to provide to, to you. Um, but this is also that EPA website, the good source to look at um, to just get some additional information on how it could affect your health. Very good. Well, good job. I, I <laughs> didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into uh, today uh, as you addressed um, what the topic would be, but interesting and uh, creepy. Yes, it was, I gotta say, doing this research, um, it is tough to look at these Google images alone, um, cause you do see them kind of cluster in the seams of the mattress and all of that. Um, but then again, there are individuals who are working for these pest control companies and the housing inspectors in my department, they see these way more often than you and I would. Um, and it's just simply good for folks to be aware. And it, it is, because again, anybody can be at risk. You could pay top dollar for that cruise ship. Um, and don't get me wrong, all of these facilities try their best to maintain and to do inspections and ensure that bed bugs are not there and not spreading. Um, but with any sort of condition, it's tough to fully eliminate it. Right. Well, just for the fact that um, you're taking a cruise, let's say, and you're coming from Massachusetts, you go onto the cruise ship that's departing, let's say, from, well, we can say Boston, right? Yeah. And then you could have taken a bed bug along with you onto the cruise yes. ship. And then even on the cruise ship, you could be taking bed bugs off the cruise ship back home. Yes. So it's really just being vigilant and especially in your own home. Um, if you see any of those signs, definitely either again, call that pest control company or um, even if you're just completely don't know what to do, call your local board of health and um, somebody there would be able to give you some resources and give you some steps to follow and how to address it. Very good. Well, there you have it, folks, bed bugs. Thanks, uh, Caitlin, for joining me. Thank you for having me. And thank you for uh, listening to this quite creepy for your health program. <laughs> uh, just uh, remember to, to uh, support your local access community access station uh, wherever you reside. Take care and stay healthy.